So if you're like me, you probably have been wanting to try VR for a while. And 500, 700, 600. And if you just think that the phone thing is too low quality, but the HTC Vive and Oculus are just too expensive, then Razer's got a solution. At $400, they have the Hacker Development Kit 2, which runs an OS VR, which is a um, open, open source virtual reality, and it's like a free program um, that's like um, that can run a lot more than HD HTC Vive, because like stuff like um, the Oculus is restricted to Oculus software. This d is not restricted. So basically. Razer is releasing this new thing in June called the HDK2, and you'll see it on the screen here. And it is, it's a headset. It's a virtual reality headset, and it's $400. That's the same price as right now, um, well, it's more expensive than a Nintendo Switch and uh, PS4 Pro, I'm pretty sure. It might be the same price as the PS4 Pro, I don't know the price exactly right now, but it's a lot cheaper than PSVR and stuff like that, so yeah, that's, that, that's, that's um, the biggest thing. Price low. If you do want, now the thing is though, the requirements are not as high, so if you pay an extra hundred dollars, you can get an Oculus Rift, but you have to realize the Oculus Rift is more demanding. And if you really want to go up there, $800 to get an HTC Vive. Yeah. So basically what they said um, in the Polygon article, this is for enthusiasts and tinkers. So basically people who are an enthusiast and you kind of get it. You'll, you, I'll have the link to the poly, um, Polygon article in this description below. And this is what they have to say. Razer now feels that HDK2 offers enough value and ease of use with the new Windows installer that people who just want a VR headset and aren't interested in tinkering or development may consider this headset a viable option. There are also plenty of OS VR games ready to play and easily searchable by Steam. Yep. So, this is literally a cheaper HT, um, um, Oculus Rift. I almost said HTC Vive. So the system requirements that they're asking for, I had to go to a different website to get this actually. So Razer says that you are going to need a GeForce GTX 660. That processor, or not processor, um, graphics card is not expensive. How, how much are we talking? Well, so you can, to get it used on Amazon, Right now, you're going to be paying $150 on Amazon.com, $150, plus uh, $6 shipping, but, like, that's not expensive at all, and you can find computers with better stuff that, like, like on Canada, it's going to be slightly more expensive, because a lot of my viewers are from Canada, uh, $280, that's kind of expected, but $280, that's somewhat high but still having a processor like that or keep saying processor having a graphics card like that is like late like that um just requirements that is not much you're not going to be paying much so of course you're going to want to you're really going to want to look into if you don't have one of these just get one of these and of course um you're really going to want want to also look into like other type of processors just in case your computer's not strong but um two gigabytes G gddr5 memory that kind of stuff it's it's evga it's a good processor and remember this is for an, a vr headset that's not it's not a lot so something else i have to talk about is that the hardware of the actual vr headset it comes with an unlimited license to do whatever you want for the software or the hardware. If you want to tear it apart, improve the optics, or add some sort of hand tracking solution better reselling the brand hardware, you can. If you want an inexpensive virtual reality headset, then you can take apart e 
easily and explain how and then they go on about how this like this is on the po polygon article they go on about how like good of um like how easy it is to take apart so the other thing they have to, they talk about in the article is but is it a good vr experience so here's what they have to say the resolution is comparable to what you get with a vive or rift and the ability to adjust the distance between your eyes and the lenses with the sturdy di dials under the headset means that more people with glasses should be able to use this headset without them. A very welcome feature. So resolution is comparable with Vive and Rift. So basically, this the resolution is practically almost on par with a Vive and a Rift. And you have to remember, you remember just how not demanding this is, so yeah. And... Um, now the guy who wrote the article says this. My biggest beef comes from the distortion you'll see around your peripheral vision as you look at- My phone! Shut up! My biggest beef comes from the distortion you'll see around your peripheral vision and you'll look around in VR. This is a very noticeable warble. I don't know if I said that right. That happens as the image moves from the sweet spot in the middle of your view with the other edges on the screen. So basically the problem um, that this guy has with it is the v peripheral vision is and could be better. And besides that, that's what they talk about. And personally, if you were really looking into VR and you have no money, like get a phone and get one of those Google Cardboard things or whatever you want. If you have a computer that's fairly good, or you're planning to get a fairly good computer, and you're looking into something like a Vive or an Oculus, but your computer just can't handle it, or it's not gonna handle it, or like it's just too expensive, then get this, the $400 thing. But if you your computer can handle um, Oculus Rift, then just save your $100 and get an Oculus Rift. It's that simple. But I personally think I'm going to get an HDK2 VR headset because this is an HDK. This is a VR headset that's way less demanding. So please tell me anything that you think about this in the comment section below. I'll have all the links to the articles in the description below. And please tell me anything I can improve in the comment section below again. Hope you guys enjoyed and see you.